Welcome back to the 20th video about my electronic steering wheel slash rudder truck IP68 project. In the previous video, we finished here the key that connects our shaft with our wheel hub. Card here, link in the description. In this video, we will do two stop bolts and maybe assemble the whole thing. Enjoy! I do not have a drawing for uh, both stop bolts. Uh, anyway, one stop bolt goes into the main body here and uh, should stick out. And the other stop bolt obviously goes here into that boss at the end of the shaft that is rotating inside here. And it will limit the rotation to plus minus yeah, a little less than 180 degrees. Initially, I bought this, uh, <clears throat> I think that's 10 millimeter aluminum round stock. Uh, yeah, to use a lathe uh, to, mm, yeah, turn down that to eight millimeters. That is the nominal diameter. However, however, I found I have also some eight millimeter round stock left here. And the thing is that round stock fits so nicely in here. Uh, you can hear it how nice it fits, just a second. So listen to that. <laughs> so there's really no need to turn that 10 millimeter round stock down to eight millimeters or a little less than eight millimeters to fit into these holes. Uh, yeah, the eight millimeter is a little bit too big for that hole. Yeah, well, almost. So yeah, all around nice snug fits with that eight millimeter round stock. We just have to get it down to length and maybe send it a little bit at least for that hole. Let's see. To have a rough idea how long that bolt is, I just make a scratch here with a knife. That should be enough. I didn't even bother with dialing in. We just uh, clean up here the face, then we chamfer it a little bit, and then we part that thing off at the approximate length, and then we <laughs> put it back uh, into the main body, see how it fits, and uh, yeah, take a little bit more off if required. You can still see the end vibrating here. That was going violently up and down. So I have to do something about that. Just a sec. You can actually see how crooked that round stock is. If I rotate here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's find the middle. That would be about here. And then I clamp it down on that side. So that's, that's much, much better now. Uh, I hope. Yeah, yeah, I can live with that. So my stop bolt is still far too long. Yeah, I can go into the black quite a bit and yeah, I guess that's what we'll be doing. Okay, instead of eyeballing it, we can also try to measure it. You're sitting just on the edge and going down. This is not very precise, but uh, this doesn't need to be a very precise part. 1.3, okay, 1.3. Let's go 1.3 down. The caliper tells me we are within a few hundreds, 
uh, but <laughs> it's not very precise here. So I just take here something to see if we are here. Yeah. I can feel it. It's a little bit too long. Let's take off another tenth. So I can't feel anything anymore. And if we make here the paper test, yeah, we are clearing here the height of our body or the depth of our <clears throat> round pocket about by a width of a paper. Perfect. For the second bolt, I have actually a drawing and I think the hole we did here in to the boss uh, is pretty much spot on. So uh, the next piece needs to be 32.8 millimeters long and we might have to send it down a little bit to fit into the hole. So we start off uh, like with the first bolt, first clean up the face here. Yeah, I again forgot to film uh, part of it. But anyway, I've marked now here the depth, 19.8 uh, millimeters, which uh, the shaft or the stop bolt has to go into the boss of my shaft. And interestingly, I think without any further, okay. Here at the end, it gets a little bit ah, harder, but I think uh, what's happening here is also I'm slipping a little bit. That was not my intention. Yeah, sorry. Uh, let's zoom out again so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, I'm. <clears throat> clamping down a little bit harder here. Okay. So not quite sure if that is already enough. Let me reposition the camera. There are really only, yeah, uh, two millimeters also missing. Uh, let me work that off again, the stop bolt, and then we can see on the scratch mark where it's getting tight, or maybe uh, the hole is not as deep as I thought. Okay, if you look here <laughs> at the end, this is... Uh, Actually, this part is fitting nice and then here down the end, it gets a little bit iffy. So let's polish that up a little bit and make it a little bit conical. Round two of fitting the stop bolt into the boss. This is, in fact, a little bit of a chore. Um, yeah, <clears throat> my shaft is slipping <laughs> in the three chore chuck instead of going deeper. So this is maybe a little bit too tight of a fit. Sorry, was still zoomed in there. Oh. Okay, uh, <laughs> I have to work a little bit. I won't film that. New plan. <clears throat> uh, yeah, the grip <laughs> of the shaft inside the hole is stronger than the grip of my three jaw chuck. So uh, yeah, there's no way I'm getting that off now. Uh, so I will try somehow to fiddle that out here of the, <laughs> the lathe and then saw it off uh, to approximate length, maybe uh, 
hammering it down also a little bit in deeper into the boss and then we do the rest with the file yeah. okay <laughs> i tried to uh, everything uh, uh, at the very end i tried to hammer the whole uh, stop bolt or yeah the raw stock from the other end deeper in but uh, yeah it it's fused it doesn't budge uh, I could use a heat treatment, but since the goal is to have <clears throat> a slight interference fit here and uh, we achieved that now, I will uh, just saw it off here. I made a little marker. That's my target stick out of 13 millimeters and uh, then we'll uh, try to fit that into the main body. And yes, this time I secured the vise properly to the table. And now for a bit of filing. Okay, we are on this side. I'm trying to get that right at uh, 13 point 13.4 and on the other side also 13.4 so four tenth more off okay i think i overshot slightly i measured in between you saw it in the time lapse but we are now at at 12.9 and 12.8786 let's say 12.9 uh let's try if that fits in now yep that looks really good sorry for the reflections but yeah and here you see the principle of function to limit the rotation. Uh, yeah, all that's left to do is uh, create two, two millimeter thick silicon uh, yeah, sleeves for both the stop bolts. So the silicon tubing is in. It just acts as a little buffer if you turn over half the wheel and that's just some silicon hose uh, which I bought uh, way back a uh, card here link in the description for this project let's put the whole thing together now so searching again for the witness mark on my key it should be on that side okay key goes around this way then we put the wheel hub on that was easy yeah, still a little gap here, but this will all come together in a second. When we put the wheel on, we know that works. We did that before. And the nut in the center and that should also yeah press the whole assembly together a little bit more yes it did perfect and now <clears throat> for the back almost forgot the most <laughs> important part uh, the magnet that goes in here so i'm wetting the surfaces here just a little bit and also the magnet because I will be using super glue and super glue needs a tiny little bit of wetness and now probably oh no it's squirting out like crazy uh 
far too much. I, <clears throat> to be honest, I expected nothing to come out at all. Uh, let's put some more water on here. And let's get that into the hole. Too much super glue everywhere. And now we let it cure for a bit and uh, continue with the assembly. The super glue, uh, it was a lot, so I let it cure overnight. And now the, yeah, that magnet is going nowhere. That's good. So we can, oops, close up the whole thing now. And <clears throat> I shouldn't forget the O-ring to make it watertight because water can ingress into that chamber. Uh, that's not the IP68 part. The IP68 part is it cannot really, wherever that thing will be mounted inside, ingress any further, uh, especially to the electronics, which are still missing. That's it. And now we can go for a test drive. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's a wee bit too hard to turn, but that shouldn't be a problem. If I release the pressure a little bit here on the nut. Yeah. So you can adjust the friction, that is the compression, that is the friction the boss has inside the main body and the, uh, <clears throat> sorry, shake cam. Can I get a few from the side somewhere? Yeah. And the friction between the wheel hub and the extension of the main body, you can adjust that by uh, just loosening up or tightening up the central nut at the front. So, yeah, uh, shake him again. Oh, we can loosen it up a little bit more. And now, yeah. It's not moving by itself, but you can steer quite easily. Yeah, that's it for today. So my wheel is almost finished. What's really missing is the electronic at the back. And I will do this uh, uh, on a later date. Uh, of course, the wheel goes together with my <clears throat> dual electronic throttle control uh yeah a card here link in the description and there is a third piece missing here but um, before we tackle the mechanics of that piece we first have <laughs> to tackle the <clears throat> uh, electronics of that thing and the physical and mechanical principles Anyway, uh, next time there will be a teardown slash repair. It's an urgent thing, a family matter. And uh, yeah, uh, I hope that goes well. Till then, bye.